Welcome to Architecting Startups with Google Cloud, where we showcase our startup customers and how they are architecting and deploying their production-ready applications with GCP. I'm Filippo Madella, and I lead one of the customer engineering teams that is focused on startups. Today, I'm happy to welcome Edwin Margulis. He's the CEO of Threeo, which is an AI-powered contact center as a service platform that is using a lot of our GCP solutions. Very happy to chat with you today, Edwin, and welcome. Thanks, Filippo, for the kind introduction. Hi, everyone. I'm very happy to chat with you about Threeo today. Perfect. So, Edwin, before we start, just to set some context here, just today, just this morning, I spent a lot of time trying to, you know, contact this company and just to solve some issues, like as a consumer, it was like one hour and a half going from their chatbot to the phone call and then transfer between agents and me having to give all the background. So it was a little bit frustrating. So I just want to share that because that kind of helps us on our conversation. So tell us a little bit about Threo and how Threo is trying to solve these type of issues today for customers. Sure. Well, just like customer service problems you were talking about earlier, companies have challenges because they unknowingly create friction for their customers. Threeo has a mission to remove as much friction as possible from customer service transactions. Today, customers are tired of bots that don't help and hold times that are too long and having to repeat themselves over and over. So we use Google GCP to solve these problems with a careful balance of human assistance coupled with automation. This careful balance, it's made possible with the liberal use of Google AI. We help brands to focus on smooth customer journeys. We do this by giving customers choices, maintaining context, and using automation when it's needed. These choices include the ability for customers to communicate the way they want to communicate. For example, they can choose SMS, chat, social media, bots, email, and of course, voice. All of this is done with a seamless transition between different communication channels. Oh, well, so thank you for the introduction. I, I, I'm i just curious, does the platform also handle like kind of pre-sales, like sales leads intake, or is more focused on customer service type of, of channels? Oh, that's a great question, Filippo. Uh, well, yeah, absolutely. We handle service and also sales. In fact, uh, with Threeo, brand managers can orchestrate just about anything from lead capture to sales qualification, scheduling, product reg, uh, sentiment feedback, just countless workflows. And all of these omni-channel transactions are hosted in Google GCP. In fact, uh, we use GCP and Google AI and our own microservices as part of a digital turnstile, gracefully pivoting from one form of communication to another. And we also maintain context from channel to channel so customers don't have to repeat themselves. Okay. so. Digital turnstile, that's interesting. I like the analogy. And like I mentioned, I know you're using a lot of our solutions. So can we go a little bit deeper now on how you're using GCP overall? Sure. Well, the idea behind this digital turnstile is primarily about, let's call it orchestration. You see, we're kind of at the center of a vast set of processes, data sets, AI resources, customer touch points. So the Threeo application orchestrates all that data and communications flowing in and out. So at the very heart of this so-called digital turnstile is our built-in workflow engine. It touches every single transaction so we can add all kinds of value on a transaction by transaction basis. In fact, it's the workflow engine that decides if the transaction requires special treatment such as Google language translation or Google data loss protection. So Google GCP allows us to deliver all of this on a global scale with uh, high reliability and security built right in. Well, perfect. Thank you. So can we go now a little bit deeper, actually break down a little bit of your architecture? Can you probably cover a little bit how are the main comp what are the main components within your architecture today? Okay, sure. Well, there are different aspects of Threo's architecture that all lead to this uptime and scalability we talked about. There are three core Google GCP clusters in what we call the uh, internal part of Threeo's architecture. 
There are also three Google support clusters we'll address a little bit later. Okay, so you mentioned three uh, within part of the core clusters. Sure. Now they're the provider cluster, the 3 application cluster, and the uh, telephony cluster. So first, the provider cluster is used to orchestrate microservices and to do software updates. Kubernetes is at the heart of that orchestration. The provider cluster also handles authentications and load balancing. Now, the second is that 3 application cluster. It houses microservices that are application specific. Uh, for example, multiple instances of chat servers, workflow service, email, scheduling services, to name a few. All of these services communicate over a common IP messaging bus, and all are orchestrated using Kubernetes. And the third is the telephony cluster, and it houses microservices, but these are specialized for functions like phone calls, conferencing, recording, and WebRTC connections to contact center agents that are using Google Chrome. Okay, so you also mentioned as part of the kind of the core services, you touched on the AI portion. I'm not seeing necessarily this within these specific clusters. So do you have other like supporting clusters outside which AI would be part of it? Oh, yes. In addition to those three core Google GCP clusters we've talked about, there's also uh, what I call the Google support clusters that are part of the architecture. And we use these to connect services cloud to cloud. They include the Google Operations Cluster, the Google Analytics Cluster, and the Google AI Cluster. So the Google Operations Cluster houses all kinds of essential services such as Google Cloud Monitoring and Google, Google uh, Cloud Logging. Uh, the Google Analytics Cluster is where Google BigQuery and Google Cloud Storage live. The Google AI Cluster is where we access all the Google AI goodies like Google Cloud Natural Language, uh, Dialogflow, Cloud Speech to Text, Data Loss Prevention, and Google Cloud Language Translation. Okay, and how do they, how these supporting customers now communicate back or connect to your main core cluster? Right. So basically, we do that with workflows that are that are uh, managed by our robotic process automation and, and workflow engine. And these uh, are in the application cluster that we mentioned before. For example, when a call ends, we can automatically send follow-up SMSs to a customer or do fulfillment or callback scheduling. This automation allows agents to do wrap-up tasks very quickly before going on to the next transaction. Interesting. So I think part of the core cluster that you mentioned, you touch on the name microservices as you were talking about the digital turnstile analogy and mention, of course, GKE, Kubernetes. And I would like to understand how, how was the adoption for your team of Kubernetes and the microservices type of architecture in general? How's your experience so far? Well, let me tell you that um, Kubernetes was a welcome addition to the mix of our architecture. Um, the need for containerization and orchestration was a very big part of our architectural decision and design. So GKE makes the replication of services and distribution of new software very straightforward. In the past, the 3 team members did this with proprietary software that took many years for us to develop. With Google GCP and Kubernetes, however, we're able to manage many different clusters all around the world with great ease. The amount of labor required to manage the network is easily less than half of what it was with previous architectures that we designed. Now with Google GCP, it is also easy to scale up or down, you know, depending on seasonal traffic loads and high peak demands. And adding capacity is now more automated uh, depending on the anticipated load uh, in a region. Wow, well, I, you know, as a customer engineer myself, uh, as a solutions architect, I love to hear Time savings, scalability, and of course, uh, the more reliability and ease of use. So let's talk a little bit now about, I think in our, in our previous conversations, uh, we, we, you actually mentioned one interesting thing that currently your platform has no window for man maintenance, right? So you always 24 seven, your application is alive. 
So can you tell us a little bit more about that? How do you eliminate it, that maintenance window uh, using GCP? Yes, um, well, we love using Google GCP and especially Kubernetes because it helps us deliver service with zero maintenance windows. It's no small feat. I mean, Trio's founding team are world-class architects who have built modern CCAS platforms over the past several decades. And we ourselves had to build a lot of tools and earlier platforms for inter-process communication, orchestration, and redundancy. In fact, our larger service provider customers really care about this, especially for their clients who run three shifts. Of course, this is enabled in large part because of Kubernetes. The clear benefit of zero maintenance windows is good old fashioned business continuity, right? No business wants to be shut down or held hostage by software that requires downtime. Yeah, I I actually think would be useful uh, to actually go a little bit deeper on that workflow that we were mentioning on your application and how these parts connect together. Usually when I'm talking to a customer to understand their architecture, what I actually, what I actually ask the customer is their customer journey. So maybe that's a good way for us to provide this prompt. So if you were to describe an usual customer journey, uh, in, could you walk us through a customer journey where some of these uh, multiple channels and how can I, that turnstile happens behind the scenes? Sure. Uh, here's an example of a customer journey that illustrates how Threo leverages Google GCP and Google AI. Uh, first, a customer connects to a Google Dialogflow bot and will later escalate from a, that bot to a live agent, a live agent chat that is, and finally to a live phone call that gets recorded and transcribed. So let's, uh, let's see how that works. So first, a customer goes to a website and they click on a bot avatar to start a self-service interaction. Here, of course, we use Google Dialogflow. Second, a secure connection is established between the website where the bot surfaces and the 3.0 environment. Here, the Google load balancer and provider services connect to the appropriate resources inside of our 3.0 application cluster. And then third, the 3.0 application cluster services look up associated journey information for the target landing page on the website. And it loads other information from the Google BigQuery database and then engages with Google Cloud Auto ML text to analyze customer intent. Okay, Alan, so what if now the customer does not want to talk to to the automated to the to the bot so they want to just transfer and chat with a live agent on that specific chat via text how does your platform handle that sure well you know based on that scenario a customer can escalate to a human based chat when they're done with google dialog flow um, essentially all the customer needs to do is type the word agent or give me a live person or something related to that or click on the live agent avatar. Then we automatically engage the 3.0 chat server in the 3.0 application cluster. Next, we do a database lookup in Google BigQuery and also check the intelligent router for available agents to connect to. That is the ones who are properly skilled to help that particular customer. And we use Google Cloud AutoML text to help with the classification so we can then do the automated routing uh, in a very quick and professional way. Finally, the 3.0 chat server in the 3.0 application cluster sets up a channel with a live agent after notifying the agent of the chat request. And then information from the Google Dialogflow bot session is sent to the agent screen. So the agent can continue the dialogue with the customer while seeing the context of the previous session with the bot, therefore eliminating the need for the customer to have to repeat themselves. Okay. Okay, last part now that I'm curious. Now you're talking to this human agent on the chat. And then for some reason, you need to go from the chat now to a phone call. Is that possible? And, and if so, how is that handled in the, in the back end? Okay, well, that would make for like the second cross-channel escalation in this customer journey, right? The first one being the escalation from the Dialogflow bot to a live agent chat. And the second being a switch from chat to phone. Well, we can handle all of that, not a problem. In this case, the agent views the customer contact record and sees the customer's phone number retrieved from Google BigQuery. Now the agent can terminate the chat and simply click on the phone number with uh, her mouse to, to call the customer. In reaction to that click made by the agent, 
the media controllers in the application cluster send call setup information to the telephony cluster, which in turn establish a phone call leg with the customer via regular telephone network. And then the agent is patched into the call via WebRTC, uh, that is a WebRTC connector in uh, Google Chrome. Hmm. Okay, and I'm assuming when you having these conversations, I know that they're most likely being transcripted to be either saved on your system or like as part of your analytics uh, workflows. So is that something that your platform does today? And, and, and are you using any of our solutions to do that? Oh, sure. Well, an agent or a Google Dialogflow IVR can ask permission to record a call for quality purposes. And with that permission, recordings are enabled. So in this case, an agent activates the recording with a button in the 3.0 UI using Chrome. And this sends a signal to the Google application cluster, which in turn tells the telephony cluster to begin recording. Afterwards, the recording is stored in Google Cloud Storage. Also, the 3.0 workflow engine in the application cluster causes the recording to be streamed to the Google AI cluster so we can call upon Google Cloud speech to text the resulting transcription of the call is also sent to Google Cloud Storage. And do you do like any type of analysis on these calls? For example, like if there's any concerns within the text, uh, like you want to evaluate the quality or you want to escalate to like a supervisor based on what was said on the call, do you do any sort of analysis on what was said? Oh, sure. In fact, based on the parameters of a customer journey, the uh, Google Cloud speech text is used to take the tr transcribed text and stream it to Google AutoML natural language for an analysis of compliance phrases. The results are then returned to the 3.0 application cluster. And supervisors can get involved because the user service in the application cluster sends a live agent dashboard alarm to the supervisor indicating that the agent missed a compliance phrase while talking with the customer. The supervisor then reviews the transcript and sees the misses. Now the supervisor can start a one-on-one -on -one chat with the agent to coach the agent on the compliance phrases that were missed. And this is set up using our chat service in the application cluster and company directory. But look, this is just one of hundreds of flexible customer journeys that can be achieved using 3.0. Okay, well, thank you. I'm curious now on the data piece. Like I mentioned, this is something that I'm imagining you are processing hundreds of thousands, if not millions. You mentioned like you have a global, uh, global scale, uh, global reach. So what do you do with all the information, not just the calls, but the metadata from these calls? What do you do today with that? Sure. Well, we use Google BigQuery to house all transaction histories. It's used for analytics, dashboards, special integrations with other systems. BigQuery has helped tremendously with 3.0 partners, such as larger service providers and BPOs who need direct access to their own data. In these larger service provider scenarios, a 3.0 partner may have their own instance of Google BigQuery running. The partner will give 3.0 permissions via Google security token service to read and write to the database, that is their database. Customers are able to run their own queries that are unique to their business. And in addition, they can run the canned reports that, that 3 has written as well. Wow, I, I, it's very unique use case, like where you're allowing your customers, almost like using this Titanic scenario with BigQuery, allowing them to query their own data. Did you have any challenges implementing uh, this solution, like something that you could share? Sure. Well, you know, at first, the extent to which customers would be running their own queries would affect other customers because the spirit of CCAS is that it's a shared tenancy arrangement where you achieve economy of scale with uh, shared use. So in the beginning, that shared use did provide some challenges. So we overcame this lopsided nature of some of the larger customer resource allocations by segmenting the architecture with separate hosted instances of Google BigQuery for larger service providers. Okay, and if you were to do any future enhancements to your ar architecture, would you like? Do you have any 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 
plans or like something that you could share with those watching a little bit? What's something that you, it's on your roadmap? Yeah, I would say that, you know, we'll continue to expand our suite of uh, AI based services based on Google AI. Um, you know, at present, we offer Google data loss protection, dialogue flow, AI based classification, uh, Google sentiment analysis, Google speech to text, text to speech, Google natural language. You know, so our focus in 2022 will be more enhancements to Google agent assist technology to augment our own robotic process automation. Okay, certainly a lot of our menu there included. And then just to wrap it up, how can uh, people watching learn, can learn more about 3O? Okay, sure. Uh, well, the best place to go is 3O.com. That's T-H-R-I-O. And there's a lot of information in there about how we use Google and uh, all the applications that we provide. You just saw how Trio is able to host global applications with ease using GKE, you store and analyze millions of records using Google BigQuery, and also provide an intelligent contact center as a service, all powered by Google AI to serve their global customers and BPO needs around the world. If you found this video helpful and you want to watch more Architecting with Google Cloud videos, please make sure that you like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel.